I'm Ed the Sock, and you're listening to the Rude Dudes Podcast. Oh, who am I kidding? There's nobody listening. That, and that's what I mean. There's like 20 or 30,000 right off the hop that just <laughs> never, <four> wheelers. <laughs> never should have been spent, no business. You know, just, just not having any idea about real life. Although, I can't say that we didn't have a lot of fun. <laughs> and that's what it's about. It's, it's exactly you know, I got these stories. The yeah. 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 These yeah. stories sold in fucking 45 minutes is the coolest shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you, gotta, you gotta do a few things. Tyler said, did you scrap Domi? Three times. Three Holy times. Fuck, boys, yeah. the first time <laughs> I fought him. So to put this in perspective, I'm 18. I just got drafted. Uh, I'm 18. It's July 8th when I got drafted. So I went home, and we were having... I knew I'd, I'd go to camp. And at the time, it was even rare for if you just got drafted to Canes to play an exhibition game. Mm -hmm. So my goal was to go there and play at least one exhibition game. Um, and I was told that, actually. I can't just say my goal was to make it, but I was told I wasn't going to. I had to work on my skating, which I did. Hopefully you'll get into Montreal form for a game because it was shutting down that year. So as I'm back telling my buddies, and this is all really surreal because we, I, I'd left at 14 as a big prospect, but even, even before my draft, I don't, I don't think I was rated in the first round. Pretty high, pretty high, but, you know, I just went from... One year in the dub, I had 30 points, 176 minutes. The next year, I have 50 goals, 110 points, fourth in the league in scoring, and 207 minutes without tens counted. It was like 25 fights or something. Yikes. So the, the stats went way, and so did Lanxis. He He went from 40 points to winning the whole league. We played well together. Um, and so to me, this was all really new to go eighth to the Habs, and they were my favorite team. So we were home. My buddies and, and I are still mesmerized. We're in Blair Connolly's backyard. Uh, uh, and I know he's going to listen is why I mentioned his name. And uh, <laughs> we were out on his patio having some beers. Chris Pettigrew was the other guy's name, and, and he said, you know, you're, you're probably going to get to play against Domi. And I thought about it, because, you know, he was who we thought, I, I won't say favorite player, but he was definitely our favorite tough guy to watch. I thought Probert was the toughest, but my favorite tough guy to watch was, was definitely Domi for all kinds of entertaining reasons. So I said, fuck it. We, get, we, had, we got drunk, we had, and I said, I'll, I'll fight him then. If we play him, and he's 26, 27, I'm 18, yeah. and a total middleweight in the WHL. I, I never backed down from a fight. I had all the balls to do it, but I just, you know, you, most of my fights, you look at them online, they're back and forth, they're toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I could take a punch, but very, very rarely did I beat anybody up. I didn't get beat up much, but there were a lot of them were draws. But this was different. This was Ty Domi, so, and I was totally underestimating that, so. <laughs> oh, totally. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I figured that should be said. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm at home. I promised these guys. Now, I'm going to camp. I'm forgetting all about it. Conley calls me. He's like, you remember what you said there, right? And he said, you know, you bet me a few hundred bucks. And there was all kinds of people, and there was, like, girls I wanted to impress and everything at this party he ended up having that I promised I was going to fight Ty Domi. <laughs> so I'm like, fuck. Promise, so, promise. Yeah, yeah, and now, as we're going in camp, and I remember I fought Donald Bashir a couple times, and that didn't oh, go. Jesus but Christ. Bashir ended up being, uh, started Bashir's career, he just grabbed and kind of hugged on. And yeah, he just seat belt fight. Yeah, and then he, he was Heavy very, hand, though. When he yeah, well, him. yeah, and I, I just did that to impress. And I always, and there's something else, no one ever wants to talk about it, but I saw Milan Lucic talk about it um, in the Players' Tribune, and no one really gives it the credit, especially at the time, if I wasn't scoring, I mean, they're first-round picks. I'm supposed to go, and I'm supposed to do well and score goals and everything, but I've never played at this pace. I don't know. I remember the biggest thing was the timing of the passes. Like, Recky give you a pass, like, he'd bullet, like, it was like a snapshot on your backhand. It's hard to take. It's an inch off the All ice those, every time. Yeah, like, it's hard to kind of get used to that. But I can always show balls, and there's no way if I fight Tom Mashir and those guys give you a reason, I wouldn't just go out and pick or let's... Go, but, any run of a game back then, all the tough guys would at least give the goalie a little snow show, or they'd do something, or they'd hit Koivu or something, and give me a reason. So I went over, and, and sure enough, he beat me twice, but Jack Demers loved it. And he said, you know, you got a lot of balls, so he said, I'm going to um, put you in a game at the Forum against uh, Boston. And he said, the, the Forum's shutting down, otherwise you'd go back to junior, but we're going to do this. So, And this is on YouTube, so I, I, uh, I, yeah, I say that, I guess, to make it... Valid, because a lot of people, I tell these stories, and like, yeah, right. But so before the game, Mike Keane and Mark Lamb are sitting there, and Lalo would line. I say, well, who do I fight? Fucking Lalo. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a legend. Wow. Like, right. What a That's fucking a legend. Yeah. Fucking name. He would, <laughs> you know, I was telling the boys earlier, he would party, he'd stay out for beers, but he's like, you better get in 
Uh, and he'd, he'd take me with him or any young guy, but if you weren't there like an hour or two early to ride the bike at practice, then he'd fucking go to the coach and say, this guy can't, can't handle it. Lalo Line never missed shit. And he, he loved his booze, loved his, uh, I won't say partying, because he, he was just, wherever Lyle was, he, he, sometimes it was with the boys at a pub, but he'd drink, he'd drink 12 beers, and he'd be fine the next day. Um, but anyway, they were there, and they said no, because usually the fights aren't really planned, but I'm going, boys, honestly, like, I'm from Newfoundland, I'm nervous as fuck here, like, Sean Beliveau sits behind the bench, and that's the other thing in Montreal, like, are you nervous? No, but I'm not nervous. It's nervous to play in the NHL behind you in Montreal, especially at the time, there was no glass, now there's glass that got to go there at the time. There was no glass, it was old school. And like all these guys, like I go to the alumni room now, the guys that hang out there, are, they're all legends. Lafleur, fucking Rocket was, was alive then, Pocket Rocket. Um, you know, uh, people that don't know, that's Maurice and Henri Richard. Yeah. And then, um, you know, like guys like Beliveau, and it was just crazy. It, they were all behind the bench, as well as the owner. Ronald Corey ran the team then, I think. Anyway, so, yeah, I was nervous. To, to say the least. So before the game, I said, guys, just tell me who fights on the other team. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, I'm just, I'm just going to go unorthodox and just slash him across the legs. I, I got it. <laughs> I'm nervous. I can't even skate. <laughs> I can't even skate. I was that nervous. Like, really. So they're like, yeah, yeah, the guy Mark Cornforth and somebody else. And they said Steve Leach. And Steve Leach was 32, middleweight like me. So I said, fuck it. So I just, he was skating one way, I was skating the other. And I axed him across the shin pads, not to hurt him. I wasn't that guy just to let him know. And he turned around, we had a great fight. So much so, you can see this on the highlight. I, I bust my hand, I get this mark there. Of it. But I bust my hand halfway through, but it was so much adrenaline. I, I, kept, I, I knocked him down like that. And he went straight down. I'm going, holy fuck, I never want to fight like that in junior. I guess it was, and it was at the Montreal Forum. And then I score a goal. It bounce, it, Recky throws it out of the corner. It bounces off my leg and goes in the middle. <laughs> no fucking joke. That's what happened. I didn't try it at all. <laughs> now I got a goal and a fight. And Demers, after the game, says... Gotta find a condom to come in. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. And actually, actually, Not wow, Montreal. I never thought about that, but then I... Yeah. So Demers goes, you want another game? You're playing, and you're going to miss your first two games in Tri-City, but they're playing Spokane Chiefs on Tuesdays, like Saturday. So he said, we'll send you back for that, but do you want another game in the NHL? Maple Leaf Gardens is shutting down, too. Maybe you can get a game in there. It would be nice for a hockey fan like yourself. So I said, no problem. Now I know exactly. As soon as he says it, playing Domi, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> so, and it all good. And then the night before, sure, and I'm pumped after that Steve Leach fight because it was the most open fight I've ever won. And it was like, these guys think I'm a killer at this point. Because if I've been in 100 fights, this is my best fight. So we fucking, he says, you're going to play uh, tomorrow night against Domi. I'm pumped. I'd had a few beers. So I call my buddies at home. I said, it's going to happen. It's going to happen tomorrow night. <laughs> So then I get up in the morning, and I think about it, and they're calling my bluff because I'm terrified. And the boys are calling me, yeah, right, no, you're... and I said, no, I am going to do it. I called O'Donnell High School, I swear, um, and in Newfoundland, and I told the principal to put it on the announcements that I was going to fight Ty Domi that night. And, uh, I'm 18. I, so I, I guess I should say that. That's the reason I called the high school. Most of my buddies are at O'Donnell in grade tw 11 or 12. So... Anyway, now that I've, now that I've done this, it's amazing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now that I've done this, and anybody been at Maple Leaf Gardens knows there. there's, yeah. there's a payphone right outside. The, no there smoking was a in the girls' bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, quit like Terry Ryan's gonna be fighting. Yeah. 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 National anthem. Yeah. 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 Seagull at the enchantment under the sea dance. <laughs> Uh, Jamming under the sea and Back to the Future. Is that Back to the Future? Yeah. Oh, I like that shit. Um, uh, but anyway, yes. Yeah, so and Blair Connolly, the guy, he flew up for it. He flew up. He didn't believe I was going to do it. Yeah. Swear to God, um, family got a bit of coin back there. Blair can fly anywhere on the drop of a hat. So he says, "Fuck it, I'm going to come back. Come up." Blair comes up. <laughs> now I'm warming up. Ty Domi's right on the other side of the red line, so I'm kind of get closer to him as I'm doing my stretches. I said, "Mr. Domi, you want to fight tonight?" And he says, who, who wants to fight me? Reve, Thornton, Tucker, who's, who's going to fight me? I said, well, I'd like to fight. He said, there's no way I'm fighting an 18-year-old. And then I said, how do you know I'm 18? He said, I'm fucking tied on me. I do my homework. <laughs> he knew everything about me, everything. You know? And um, so he says, no. I said, well, fine. I'll, I'll just go after Matthew Schneider or Doug Gilmore or someone like that. And I wasn't, because I wasn't that kind of guy. I was more of a defender kind of fighter than anything. But I needed to get my story down. I and no one would believe me if I said, I asked Ty Domi to fight, and he said no. Yeah, right, yeah, right. 
So, you know, that just doesn't sound right. So I had to do this. So this is also out there on the internet. So there was a stoppage. I got my first shift. It was the end of the second or, or end of the first or early second. And I went out and, and Matthew Schneider was there and I kind of elbowed him up high. Again, I wanted nothing to do with him. I might even have said that I was going by after while I was going by. I gave him the elbow up high, but I knew Domi was behind me. Sure enough, he grabbed me and turned me around. First one, I go straight down. You can see on, on the YouTube, he, he lets me back up. Be ever, ever so slightly, but if he wanted to keep going, he would have finished me off. But he let me back up, and again, I said I could take a punch. So, and I've never thrown many lefts, but he's a lefty, and I want it to look all right, so I'm just kind of throwing this left like a girl. I'm, I'm, I'm giving her this one. <laughs> and he's just coming at me, and you know the way he fights, he gets down low and he comes up. But now it looks all right, so we have a decent fight. I can't believe I'm saying that. But, um... And he hits me again at the end, and I go down, and he hits me pretty good. But, I mean, I got probably like eight or nine punches in against Ty Domi. I look pretty good, and I'm thinking the whole time, I'm like, I'm a fucking rock star on the yeah. <laughs> And all now they're just... Nice that's it. That's it. That's it. There's going to be lots more. Yeah. So, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, so then we get to the penalty box, and he actually says to me, he says, um, you know, thanks a lot for fighting me at home. And I was like, what? He goes, well, no one wants to fight me at home. He said, there's a lot of momentum in this league and subs, 20,000 people, whatever it was. And he's like, you know, so a lot of people, if they're going to fight me, um, they do it in their barn. They don't want our, our team to get momentum. I'm like, I didn't even think about that, so but you're welcome. Yeah, yeah. Well. And he says, well, um, and what are you doing after the game? So he's, he tell the, the, the strip club was called, called the, was it still here, the Brass Rail? <laughs> yeah, Brass yeah. Rail. Yeah. Yeah. Got your hockey card so on your head. Brass yeah. Rail, so, and I don't know if I said it to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Checking the did, pocket. You did, you did. Uh, of course, yeah, of course yeah, you did. Course if this did. was any time between 1996 <laughs> and 2003, I definitely had my hockey card on. 100%. So, 96 to 03. Yeah. <laughs> and I lived yeah. seven years. Oh, yeah, for sure. After that, puzzle. sporadically, and once in a while, I still do it. But, um, <laughs> so he says, I can't remember. I don't want to put words beauty. in his mouth. I don't. And, and, but I think I might have said I was going there. It was something like that. And uh, with my buddies, I didn't know Toronto at all. And we usually would, but it was exhibition. We were staying overnight for some reason. Um, I went back. Maybe they played him again. But um, he either phoned someone or whatever he set up. He, he just said, okay, it's all cool. So we went there and there was a section roped off for us. Um, Ty didn't come, but he, he must have made a phone call. And we went in, they're like, yeah, it's all set up. He paid for uh, me and my buddies to drink, have a few drinks. The next year, now I don't expect this. Now, so that was a neat little story. The next year, I don't expect it. I'm, I'm skating him down the ice, and he turns me around. We're up two to one in the third period. He says, you owe me one. I'm like, Christ, <laughs> I guess I do. We owe you one, I suppose. That's the way, <laughs> that's the way it works in like yeah. this conduct of goons, but I've yeah. never really been there before. Again, I fought a lot, but Owen, tough guy's a fight, never really <laughs> <laughs> was part of the plan. So it's like, okay, so the last dance, yeah. Terry. <laughs> this is in the <laughs> again, just a year later. Yeah. And we fight, and he takes free? my... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's why I couldn't turn it down. He was too good of a guy. And I, I'd already been telling that story for a year. I didn't think it'd have, have more to it. So anyway, <laughs> and he, this time he rips my jersey off. I'm fighting him with nothing on. It looks pretty good again, but he gets the better of me. And the next year, if you can believe, I fought him again. So three times. And about 2006 or 2007, um, we were in... I was in um, St. Mary's. I was in Halifax. Uh, my buddies were graduating from St. Mary's, but there was also a charity golf tournament on the go. At Bubbles was there from Trailer Park Boys. I, I can't think of exactly what it was. I'd been at Brad Richards golf tournament. They asked me to do this one. I came over. It was just a meet and greet kind of thing. We went to the bar after. Which was like noon or something. This started at 6 a.m. So Domi's over in the corner. Here's my buddies, and we're all ordering whatever you know, beers, wings. You know, the whole days going by. We're eating and drinking like kings. So the boys say, "Go talk to him." I'm like, "Oh fuck, I, I don't know if I want to talk to him. Maybe a couple more beers." So I do, and I, I have a couple more beers, and then I go over. But he's got to leave for some reason. Now he sees me there, and I don't know. I, I'm thinking he doesn't know me. But anyway. He does, I guess, and um, briefly when I went over there, he's just like, you know, you, there's not a lot of guys that fought me three times. I'm thinking, because I'm thinking he played a thousand games, whatever. Yeah, yeah. But you think about it, there really aren't that many. And he leaves, and the, the, the waitress came over about four hours later. We were there all day. And um, as we were about to leave, she said, yeah, you guys don't worry about that. Ty picked it up. Now, he didn't know me. Yeah. Okay. 
And I've heard mixed reviews on this guy. I've heard he's a great guy. I heard he's a dick. But I got to be honest, I never saw. If he's a dick, then you know I never saw it. He, he did all that for me. Again, I don't know him. He dropped at least a thousand dollars on our table and yeah. out, out of appreciation. So that's amazing. You know, say what you want about the guy. In my experience, he's been nothing but. I've never stand heard up. anything but stellar reviews on Tai Domi. I've Pretty never good. heard like a backhanded word go. Yeah. People love that. Good. Guy. I, got, yeah, I, got a, I know a pretty good story about Ty from he. Uh, <laughs> Ty bought a, a cottage out, I guess, like Sobble area somewhere out there, like out Owen Sound. And he was eating. Uh, this was years ago. He was eating at the East Side Mario's down there, and it would have been with like Young Max and everything. Like he was out there with his family, and uh, there's this big galoot from uh, Owen Sound, like a big lacrosse player. Hockey guy, but he was a goon. Yeah. Saw Ty at Eastside Mario's, and he came up to him while I was eating dinner with his family. He's like, Ty, he's like, you're like, you're a legend. I, I love you. I'd love to fight you. Ty's like, what? Right now? He's like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'd love to fight. He goes, man, I'm eating with my family. Like, just go away. Right? Guy walks away, puts another beer away, comes over. He's like, Ty, I gotta tell you, I would love to just have a chance to fight you right now. And Ty's like. Man, I'm eating with my family. <laughs> this is going to happen. Goes away. Comes back a third time. Ty's like, man, this has to end. Like, right, you, you got to go away. I'm very. I'm not going to fight you, but you, you need to leave. Fourth time, this guy comes back. Fourth time. Ty, this is the way the story was told to me. Is that he took, <laughs> he had the bib in and snapped it on the table. Got up, went outside. Five, just right to the face. Left the guy buckled and the smoke section came back in. Put his bib back in and finished his dinner. <laughs> Uh, I hope that's legendary that's shit. Hilarious. It's a true story. Yeah, it is a true story. All right, this is Rob Pugh. You're listening to the Rude Dudes Podcast with Tom O'Donnell, with uh, fucking Jared Campbell, with Tyler Morrison. If you're listening to the show, there's chances you got brain damage. <laughs>